the end of the day, Father, it's what you want and it's what you receive. And so, Father, help us to be humble with what we're doing, yes. keep us in, in the right attitude and frame of mind, and even in our pains and in our illnesses and anything that we've got going on in our heads. We just pray, Father, that we can lay it at the altar, surrender to you, and empty ourselves to you, and worship you as the God of his word. We thank you, Father, for this day, for this season, and what it all means. In Jesus' name, amen.
peace that was always promised in Scripture, the peace that we have within, you know, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. In me you will have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But in me, that peace is an inner contentment. A peace that you can be happy in yourself, knowing that despite your, your issues, despite your, your, your downfalls, the, the, your imperfections, your mistakes, uh, whatever you, your past was, you're right with God. If you have a place for Him, you have a future, you have a destiny. That is the peace. And that's what we, when we have loved ones that, that pass away, we know that they've achieved the ultimate. Because they're not only getting the spiritual peace that, that we have now, they had it, but now they're getting it all. And that's what we all want. So, we think about these things. We're going to see these singing today. I'm sure there's going to be a few songs about peace. We're going to be having a musical production instead of a, a word. We're standing behind the lectern today. Da, 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 da. Getting excited and raising my hands. I'm going to be reading, taking turns reading from the, the Christmas story I write from the Word and incorporating songs with it. And so we hope you enjoy it. We hope that we all can get into the Christmas spirit. You know, like I said, this has been a hard week. And there have been moments in this week that I'm sure my wife, I know my wife and myself have had that we we didn't feel like we, like, I'm just not in the mood for Christmas. You felt that way this week? Well, we have to put ourselves back in that spirit. Because this is supposed to be the most joyful time. So we hope you enjoy the program. We'll turn it over to Pastor Shannon. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. As I said, we'll be opening up with our hymn. Oh, come, all ye faithful. We ask you all stand with us and sing.
King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords, Father, you are a miracle working God. Father, they stumble you, Father, they are suffering, Father, the burden, Father, the grief of the lost one, Father. Father, we just lift them up in your mighty hands. We pray, Lord, that you touch each and every one of them, Father. Father, I pray, Father, they will find joy in this darkness, Father. That they will see the light, Father. That they will run toward the eternal, Father. That they will know, Father, that you will never leave them or forsake them, Father, in the midst of all the troubles that they're facing right now, Father. So today, Father, we come, Father, and we choose to give you the praise and glory and honor, Father. And we just want to exalt your holy name, Father. And we just want to say thank you, Master. In Christ Jesus,
in him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Bless the elements. We pray that you would join us in partaking of the Lord's Supper. Isn't the cup of blessing that we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Isn't the loaf of bread that we break a sharing in the body of Christ? Since there is one loaf of bread, we who are many are one body because we all share the one loaf of bread. Glory to God. Father, we bless these elements in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that we partake of the body of Christ. We partake of the suffering. We also partake of the life that he lived. In Jesus' name, thank you for all things being said and done. Decently in order. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Again, is it the cup of blessing that we bless? A sharing in the blood of Christ. Is it the loaf of bread that we break? A sharing in the body of Christ. Since there is one loaf of bread, we who are many are one body. Because we all share the one loaf of bread. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 16 through 17. Hallelujah. Luke 34. 24 verse 30 says, After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. As we do even now. Amen? Amen. The bread has been broken, and we're handing it out that we might all share in it. Isaiah 53 5 says, He was pierced because of our rebellions and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. By his wounds, we are healed. You are healed mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever you need from the Lord. Amen. We receive it. Hallelujah. As a part of the body of Christ. Because healing is the children's bread. Amen. Hallelujah. First John 1 and 7 says, But if we live in the light, in the same way as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us. From every sin. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you from every sin. Know that you are forgiven this morning. Know that you have a clean slate this day. This is a new day. And his mercies are new every morning. So whatever you did the last minute, the last hour, the last day, the last week, the last year. God has erased it. And it is as far as the east is from the west. The two shall never meet. This goes out in the universe. Keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. If they never meet. If you bring it up, he'll say, what are you talking about? I don't remember that. Well, what are you talking about? Hey, he says, I don't remember that. But well, God, I... And the enemy, the devil, he's always in the, in the front face of God accusing you, reminding him of everything you've done wrong, that he might have your soul, but not so. Jesus has won the battle. The keys to death and hell and the grave, they've been taken. They belong to our Lord and our Savior, which means they belong to you because he's giving you the keys. Amen. Hallelujah. We have the keys of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is what we remember. Amen? Amen. This is why you have to take communion. Remind yourself of who you are. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Let's do that now. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Let's take it here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In remembrance of you. Hallelujah. 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 Think about his love. Lord. Think about his goodness. Think of all the things he's brought us through.
right now, God, we come before you, Lord God, to offer up whatever we have in our hands to give. Right now, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to give. Not because we want something. It's because of what you've already done for us. We thank you, Lord God, how you took that and you began to speak blessings over us. Just blessings and blessings and more blessings. You said, try me and see if I won't pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. So today we thank you today, Lord God, for the outpouring of your blessings. And as you bless us, help us to bless you back, Father God. To give back to you what you gave to us in greater detail, in greater strength, in great of our in, in, in within ourselves. And as we do this, we do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. When Herod was the king of Judah, Judea, there was a Jewish a priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commands and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. And one day Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him, but the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you don't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. Oh, speaking. 
through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. They'll call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relation with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greetings, Elizabeth's child leaped within her. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Mary responded. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty hands have done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and hating ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent, sent the rich away with the empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. When it was time for Elizabeth's baby to be born, she gave birth to a son. And when her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had been very merciful to her, everyone rejoiced with her. When the baby was eight days old, they all came for the circumcision ceremony. They wanted to name him Zechariah after his father. But Elizabeth said, No, his name is John. They all exclaimed, What? what? There, there is, is no one in a family, family by that name. name. <laughs> so they used gestures to ask the baby's father what he wanted to name him. He motioned for a writing tablet, and to everyone's surprise, he wrote, His name is John. Instantly, Zechariah could speak again, and he began praising God. All fell upon the whole neighborhood, and the news of what happened spread throughout the Judean hills. Everyone who heard about it reflected on this event and asked, What will this child turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was surely upon him in a special way. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He sent us a mighty Savior from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago. Now we will be saved from our enemies and from all who hate us. He has been merciful to our ancestors by remembering his sacred covenant, the covenant he swore with an oath to our ancestor Abraham. We have been rescued from our enemies. So we can serve God without fear and holiness and righteousness for as long as we live. Then to John he said. And you my little son. Will be called the prophet of the most high. Because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. 
Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Filled. 
And when he went before to start his ministry, he had to bring to the attention of the people how dirty and filthy they were and they needed forgiveness of their sins. I don't know if you caught it, but in the, in the prophecy that his own father spoke over him, Zechariah, he said here, he talked about how people would find salvation through forgiveness, and, but he also talked about enemies. He says, we have been rescued from our enemies. This wasn't, this, none of this was speaking about the Romans or the governments. The enemies is anything that, that brings about sin in our life. That's our real enemies. And what Jesus would do would bring an end to that. But John would be the one to open the door. There's a strong connection there. John had to live in the field and separate himself from it. To show us in his, in his life that that's what would end up happening when Jesus would come. Yes, we would be living in filth and we would be in the wilderness, but we still would have to separate ourselves from it. A strong connection there. And it just shows you the truths, the hidden truths, the gems of how the Bible interconnects itself. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. All that time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, and David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child, and while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son.
warm sun. She wrapped him in snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks and sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them when he said, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Unto us a child is 
Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God that many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of my hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Asking, 
Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He said he called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? And they answered, In Bethlehem and Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave them gifts of gold, frankincense, and more.
When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God has warned them in the dream not to return to her. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning. <coughs> Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted. For they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel, and Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled the prophets, fulfilled what the prophets had said. He will be called a Nazarene. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled the requirement of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. <laughs> when Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. She said, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. He asked, <coughs> Well, why did you need to search? Didn't, didn't you know that I was thinking in my mind? Father's But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew into wisdom and his stature and favor with God and all the people. Glory to God in the highest and the beast.
quite a different program than what we're used to. Now, just so you know, you don't have to smell any food to think we're not feeding you today. <laughs> There's a church that came here last Christmas. You remember that big spread they gave us? Guess what? They're supposed to be here at 1230. Oh, right. So there's going to be a big, bigger spread than usual today. And there's probably going to be, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 people from that church who's going to enter the building. It's going to get pretty crowded in here in a minute. So if we're going to be fed. We always are. God always makes sure of that. Amen. But I want to... I want to tell a story. You may have heard this story before. I don't know if I've given it in here since I've been at Spread of Life. It's actually a, a story I told my children last night when I came upstairs and before they went to bed. This is a true story. Several years ago, there was a mission team that went to Russia. Now, Russia, for the most part, seems to be a pretty Christian nation. But there were parts of Russia that still had never, never knew anything about Christianity. This mission team went into an orphanage and told the, it, the whole Christmas story to all these children who had never heard it before. Never heard this Christmas story before. Never heard about the wise men. Never heard about the, the baby in the manger. Never heard about the star of Bethlehem. So they tell the children these stories. Even the people that work in the orphanage are amazed. I never heard this. So after it's over, they ask the children with the arts and crafts, we want you to display what you just heard. So they all got together with their little arts and crafts, and some of them cut out pictures, some of them built little things with little sticks that they had. And then they were supposed to tell their story after they built it. When it got really touching, was they came to this little six-year-old boy named Nisha. The missionary team looked down and they saw not one baby in the manger, two babies in the manger. So they called one of the translators, explain this to us, let him tell his story. We want to know. So he proceeds to tell the story. Everything correct. All about everything that happened and what we know and what we just read about. He tells the story and all this. But then when he gets down to the part where Mary put the baby in the manger, here's where he changed it. He said that Jesus was put in the manger. He looked at me. He said, do you have anywhere to go? And she said, no. <coughs> he told me, I can get in the manger with him and stay with him forever. missionary team said this little boy began to sob and sob because he finally found someone who wanted him who would not abandon him and who would not abuse him Just hearing the story changed that little boy's whole perspective of life. Now Jesus is 
still doing that? His story is still changing lives. The real deep part of it is he wants you to come in and stay with him forever.
Be a good example. Let there be a good change come upon this area. Let it be a good change. Anybody here need prayer? Anybody hurting right now? Anybody depressed right now because you can't be with your family during this time of the year?
right now. Right now, give it to him. Raise your hands up and give it to him. Oh, yes. By faith. Hallelujah.
evening. I pray for protection, a spirit of a sound mind upon everyone. If there's going to be gatherings involving uh, substances or alcohol, I pray, Father, that those who may be in the sound of my voice will avoid it. I pray, Father, that they will have the strength, Father, to not allow themselves to succumb to something that can hurt them. Bless them, Father. Father, I thank you for the church that's on its way. I thank you for the food that we'll soon eat. And I'm sure when they get here, the pastor will pray again. But we give you glory and honor for every gift and every perfect present that has come forth from your table. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, our God. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the church say,